story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and thriller movie called Mother of Tears. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Construction workers dig in an old cemetery where they discover a coffin with a box-shaped urn. Monsignor Brusca leads in opening it, and inside, they find the remains of Oscar de Laval, an 18th century church official. Brusca takes the urn and tells the others to rebury the remains when night comes. Later, he writes to a museum director named Michael Pierce, telling him to examine the contents of the urn because he's an expert on magic and esoteric sciences. As he writes this, he worries about what their discovery might bring. Not long after, the urn gets shipped to the Museum of Ancient Art in Rome. Out of curiosity, the assistant curator, Giselle, urges the art restoration student, Sarah Mandy, to open the urn while Michael is still away. Giselle opens it with a small knife, but she accidentally cuts herself, unknowingly dropping blood on the urn. Inside, they find a 13th century dagger and three ominous looking statues. Underneath it is a red tunic adorned with ancient writings. Assuming that Michael would want them to translate it, Giselle tells Sarah to fetch the Aramaic and Mycenaean dictionaries. While Sarah is away, Giselle tries to read the text in the artifacts. Suddenly, the room starts shaking, and an ominous groan echoes. Three creatures appear out of nowhere and pin her down, shoving a paper presser down her throat until her teeth fall out. Just then, a mysterious woman takes the dagger and cuts Giselle's belly spilling her intestines to the floor. After this, the creatures choke her with her own intestines. Sarah soon arrives and sees the horrifying scene. She quietly flees but gets pursued by a monkey, so she hides from it. However, her relief turns into worry when she finds that the doors are locked. The monkey suddenly appears, but the doors open just as a disembodied voice tells Sarah to go, so she flees. Eventually, the police arrive at the scene and take Sarah's statement, but the authorities think she's crazy. During her interrogation, Michael arrives to pick her up and embraces her. Still afraid, Sarah asks to spend the night at Michael's place. Sarah starts recounting what happened and how a voice saved her, but Michael's son Paul wakes up. While making hot chocolate for him, Michael recounts that the urn came from Brusca, whom he met when the Monsignor gave a lecture on spiritualism. Sarah doesn't believe in the occult, but Michael is more open-minded. After putting Paul back to bed, the two make love, but Sarah is still bothered by the voice that saved her. Elsewhere, the mysterious woman wears the red tunic while her worshippers hold a sacred ritual to honor her resurrection. The next day, a series of gruesome and unexplainable events take place all over the city. One woman tosses her baby into a river, while others succumb to all kinds of violence. Michael visits Brusca, only to find that he's been in a coma right after he sent the urn. Instead, Michael talks to his assistant, Father Malesi, who reveals that the urn came from the coffin of Oscar de Laval, who was part of an Aosta legend that Brusca religiously believed in. The urn was found in a church renovation back in 1814, and it contained some pagan artifacts. As the legend claims, a pack of wolves came out of the forest the night the urn was found, and they dug and ate the freshly buried bodies in the graveyard. Because of this, the local priest decided to send the urn to the Vatican, so Oscar de Laval courageously offered to deliver it. He was a knight of noble birth, so only he was allowed to talk to the Pope. However, death and destruction followed him wherever he went, which caused some townsfolk to shun him. When he reached Viterbo, he was already sick and blind. The church took him in, but he died six days later. His coffin was chained with the urn, sealed with crucifixes. Father Malesi claims that Brusca started acting oddly after he found the urn. He believed that its contents belonged to Mater Lacrimarum, also known as the Mother of Tears, who is part of a powerful trio of witches practicing the black arts. The priest thinks it's foolish to believe in the occult, and Michael gets offended by this. He thanks Father Malesi for the information before leaving. As he gets to his car, he finds two witches watching him. Meanwhile, chaos continues to ensue all over the city. At her apartment, Sarah mourns as she looks at old photos of her late family. She then visits Michael's house, but nobody answers when she arrives. She finds him in Paul's room, and to her surprise, Paul's headboard is filled with ancient symbols written in blood. Michael claims that the evil entities tied to the urn took his son, and if he wants to see him again, he must remain silent about the things he knows. Desperate to save his son, Michael decides to go to Monteleon, where an exorcist named Father Johannes may help him. However, Sarah thinks they should call the police, which makes Michael angry. 
saying they'll only think he's crazy. The next day, Sarah researches on her own about the witches and the urn. Suddenly, she receives a call from Michael, asking for help. Before he can say further, however, Michael sees the witches from before watching him, so he drops the call. Because of this, Sarah heads to the train station to find him. There, a gang of witches arrives to pledge their loyalty to Mater Lacrimarum. One of the witches immediately senses Sarah's presence when she arrives, so the group hunts her down. Sarah desperately tries to avoid them, but the detectives investigating Giselle's death also arrive with the police to search for her. Sarah ends up in a bookstore but gets cornered. The voice from the museum speaks to her again, telling her to focus so she won't be seen. True enough, Sarah turns invisible and avoids being caught by the police. Despite her confusion about what happened, she focuses back on the situation. Hurrying across the station, Sarah hops on a random train, but a detective and a witch follow her. While chasing after her, the witch grabs the detective's throat and makes him bleed from his orifices, killing him. Then, she continues to look for Sarah and finds her inside the restroom. Quickly, Sarah forces the door shut, trapping the witch's head. She repeatedly rams the door against the witch's head until she dies. After this, she heads to another train bound for Monteleone. Soon, the police find the bodies of the witch and the detective. Given that the detective was twice her size, they're confused as to how Sarah could have killed him and the witch. Because of this, the police think that there's more to the situation. Later, Sarah arrives in Monteleon and heads to the church to meet Father Johannes. While she waits for him, she meets Marta Colusi, who was friends with her mother, Elisa. Sarah knows that her mother was a dancer, but Marta reveals that she was also a spiritualist and a powerful white witch. Sarah doesn't believe her at first until Marta comments about her escape at the train station. She suggests that the voice guiding her is Elisa, but she didn't die in an accident as Sarah has known. Sarah's parents were murdered by Mater Suspiriorum, the eldest and wisest of the three mothers. Father Johannes arrives, but he's frail and vulnerable. He claims that he has to fight, but Marta calms him down with some medicine. When he relaxes, he finally notices Sarah and explains what he knows. According to him, witchcraft was birthed by three sisters on the shores of the Black Sea. For years, they've roamed the world and wreaked havoc until they found their own homes. Mater Suspiriorum, the mother of size, settled in Freiburg. The mother of pain, Mater Tenebrarum, went to New York. And Mater Lacrimarum, the mother of tears, came to Rome. The latter is the only one still alive, and she's the most beautiful yet most cruel of the three. Father Johannes claims that Elisa heavily injured Suspiriorum in a challenge, causing her to be reduced into a shell of her former self. When the urn was opened, Lacrimarum emerged from the shadows to bring about the second age of magic. Witches from all over the world are gathering in Rome to celebrate her return. Father Johannes believes that they must stop her before the world goes mad. He has a book in his study to guide them, but when he goes to get it, he finds that his assistant, Valeria, has killed her own child. She then butchers him before slashing her own throat. Having witnessed this gruesome scene, Sarah and Marta flee Monteleone. However, they struggle to escape when a horde of possessed people blocks their path. They manage to hit the road, and as soon as they're far enough, Marta offers Sarah to stay in her home. However, Sarah prefers staying in her house, just in case Michael returns. Because of this, Marta gives Sarah her address and phone number in case she needs her help. As they make their way back to the city, they see churches in flames. Elsewhere, Lacrimarum's worshippers slash open Paul's body and eat his insides. Meanwhile, Sarah heads to her apartment when she finds shadows moving from under her door. Unwilling to risk it, she runs and seeks refuge in Marta's home, where she meets Elga, Marta's girlfriend. Marta encourages Sarah to use her gifts to help her in times of danger. Sarah does as she's told, and as she focuses on her abilities, she sees the drifting spirits around her. Suddenly, Elisa's spirit appears, telling her to fight. However, she can't stay for long and quickly disappears. Her mother's words encourage her, so Sarah asks Marta to help her hone her gifts. However, Marta is only a psychic, so instead, she promises to take her to Guglielmo de Witt, a great Belgian alchemist. Sarah spends the night at Marta's house, but she struggles to sleep. She tries to get out of bed, but a demon suddenly appears beside her. Sarah wakes up from the nightmare and hears a sound down the hallway. She takes a peek and sees Lacrimarum's monkey entering the house. Sarah quietly hurries away just before a henchman sent by the witches joins the monkey. Once she gets outside, Sarah calls Marta through a payphone to warn her. 
However, Marta never gets to pick up the call as the man stabs Elga in front of her. The man then picks up the phone, but Elisa's ghost warns Sarah that it's too late. He lets out an inhuman scream, so Sarah flees. Afterward, the man stabs Elga's eyes before stabbing a spear between Marta's legs. Suddenly, Lacrimarum arrives, and she's furious that Sarah escaped. Meanwhile, Sarah arrives in the slums, and her mother reappears, reminding her to use her gifts and remain strong. Suddenly, she spots Michael in the streets, looking pale and sick. She approaches him, and he tells her that Paul might be dead already. Instead of his grief, Michael focuses on saving Sarah in the meantime, so he invites her to his house, where it's safe. When they get there, Michael tells her not to turn on the lights. Still, Sarah notices that he's bleeding, and after insisting on helping him, she unveils the huge slit on his throat. Sarah realizes that Lacrimarum killed Michael, and is only animating his body to kill her. With this, Sarah sets him on fire, but he still chases her to the basement. As Michael burns the door, Elisa's spirit reappears and reminds Sarah to find Guglielmo. Once Michael enters, she sacrifices herself to banish him into hell. The next morning, Sarah takes a bath in a sauna. There, she sees herself in the news and learns that she's officially become fugitive. Not long after, she makes her way through the chaotic city and looks for Guglielmo. After locating his address, she gets greeted by his apprentice, who lets her in. Guglielmo greets her, but quickly sprays something on her face to paralyze her. Having seen her on the news, he wanted to ensure that she didn't come with ill intentions. Using a tinted glass, Guglielmo looks into her eyes to see who she is and what she's seen before releasing her. After this, he asks her why she came, and Sarah responds that she needs to find the Mother of Tears to stop her. However, Guglielmo tells her that there isn't an army of good witches that can overpower Lacrimarum's forces. Although he can't provide answers, he can help her with what he knows. Guglielmo reveals that the great Roman alchemist, Valeri, built houses for each of the three mothers. It was too late when he discovered that evil dwelled in his creation. However, he wrote a book on everything he knows about the three mothers, and Guglielmo hands this to Sarah. In the book, she sees a riddle. What you see does not exist, and what you cannot see is the truth. Guglielmo says that the book can help her find Lacrimarum's lair, and when she gets there, she might find the answer she's looking for. After cruising through the chaotic streets of Rome, Sarah sees a group of witches and decides to follow them. Though she loses sight of them, she still finds Lacrimarum's abandoned mansion. She courageously enters it, only to find it empty. Heading down a flight of stairs, she meets a homeless man. He claims that an association of philosophers and artists used to live in the mansion, but they left after the Nazis took hold of it. After this, Sarah looks around, but someone suddenly grabs her into a corner. Enzo Marchi, one of the detectives hunting her down, tells her to be quiet because Lacrimarum's men are after them. When the coast is clear, Sarah sees the riddle from the book painted on the wall, along with symbols similar to the ones on the urn. Sarah presses the symbols and opens the entrance to a secret passage. Sarah and Enzo enter and find themselves at the mansion's hidden catacombs. As they search the place, Sarah explains to Enzo that they're dealing with witches. Because of this, he takes the lead to protect Sarah. However, Sarah strays from him when she sees an interesting sculpture, leading Enzo to be caught by Lacrimarum's men. Although she hears the commotion and tries to save him, Enzo has already been taken deep into the catacombs. Suddenly, two witches appear at the end of the passage, but Sarah uses her gifts to appear invisible. After this, she searches for Enzo and encounters Lacrimarum's followers, indulging in vile and extreme forms of self-harm. She soon arrives in a ritual chamber where Lacrimarum's followers are butchering Guglielmo and his apprentice. Suddenly, the men bring Enzo in, proudly presenting him to their newfound goddess. However, he frees himself and starts shooting the witches, so Lacrimarum commands everyone to attack. Enzo quickly gets overpowered and chained, so one of Lacrimarum's followers pierces his chest with a spear, causing him to scream in agony. Lacrimarum's monkey finds Sarah hiding by the entrance and pounces at her, making her scream and reveal her presence. Lacrimarum uses her magic to command Sarah to come forward and collapse before her. She plans for her followers to feast on Sarah's body, but before doing so, she offers a toast for their success. Unbeknownst to her, Sarah has regained her strength and uses a spear to snatch Lacrimarum's tunic. She tosses it into the fire, and with the evil witch's power destroyed, the ground begins to quake. The mansion collapses, and as the pillars fall, one impales Lacrimarum, killing her. Amid all the chaos, Sarah escapes into the sewers, where she traverses through the sea of bodies and filth. She almost loses her mind, but Enzo appears and helps lead her to safety. Later, they reach the surface and laugh, knowing that good has prevailed and the threat of the three mothers is no more. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.